Every year, companies join forces or are taken over, profoundly affecting the business landscape. But why do companies merge? Is it clear that the resulting fusion will have greater competitive advantage, cost savings and improved efficiency? It's a hugely disruptive process and the effort of combining infrastructure, management and employees requires a considerable amount of time and money. However, mergers can offer substantial rewards. Combining businesses which serve different areas of the same market can transform their collective customer base and buying power. Mergers may also serve other purposes. They can help companies combine their knowledge or skills. They might also be aimed at reducing competition, particularly in a crowded marketplace. Rob Peabody is a senior manager in BP. He's overseen many mergers and acquisitions, including the largest merger ever to occur in the energy sector. We asked him about the major issues surrounding corporate mergers. But first, why do companies merge? Companies, in my experience, merge for at least four reasons. The first one being around cost synergies. That's probably the best and uh, most uh, compelling reason. The second one is to do with enhancing market position. The third one has to do with uh, bro a broken company that really can't see any other alternatives. Uh, so they merge because they can't really f think of anything else to do. Uh, and maybe to even obscure their current performance. And the fourth one is all around egos. Are most mergers successful? Most mergers are not successful. Let me qualify that a bit. First of all, by saying there's lots of academic research to say that most acquisitions do not create value for the company who's acquiring the shares. Extending that to mergers, we can talk about the difference between a merger and an acquisition. It's a quite a gray line. But most mergers, I would assert, are not successful. What is the difference between a merger and an acquisition? If you really want to understand whether something is a merger or an acquisition, you need to understand is, did one company get paid a control premium? And if you understand that one company actually paid more for the merger than the other company, then that company normally expects to be taking over control of the joint entity. What should you consider when attempting a merger? You need to consider a number of things. The first and foremost is, do you have a compelling strategy? Do you have a compelling strategy that's going to create sustainable competitive advantage or certainly not erode that competitive advantage going forward? The second thing is, is there a synergy prize? Is there a tangible synergy prize? And I would first and foremost focus on costs because mergers cost money. The actual transaction costs of the deal are very high. So if you don't have a lot of identified synergies, and again, you've got to actually focus on people. As hard as that is, if you can't identify a fairly substantial prize around people that are not going to be required by the joint company, then it's very hard for other, other uh, uh, cost benefits to flow through. So you've got to start by being quite, um, you've got to focus on the tangible synergies that come through. Is there a big marketing prize? Are you able to take the market space that you're in and take products from the new company and, and deploy them in that marketing space very efficiently? Or are you able to take your products and deploy it into marketing space of the other company very efficiently? Are there procurement prizes available? But focus on the tangible prizes. What are the challenges of a merger? People always represent the real challenge in this, uh, in this task. And in managing people, you have, to be, you have to tell them what's going on, keep them informed. You have to ultimately win them over. 
that this is going to be good for the company, but it's also going to be good for them. Because in any transaction, people being people want to understand what's in this transaction for them. And you need to be clear about that. And you need to be honest about it. Uh, and that's critical. People will take good news and bad news very well, in my experience, if you're very open and very honest about it and explain to them why things are happening. What impact can a merger have on clients? In mergers, clients often get lost. In fact, I would almost say that's uh, more the norm. There is so much internal focus during a merger, you really have to make a specific uh, initiative, almost, out of staying in touch with your clients. In any merger, you should actually anticipate that revenues will go down because customers are going to look at you. You now, you, may, you were two companies they're dealing with, you're now one. There's a tendency for them, in order to manage their portfolio risk, to want to take some of that combined business and move it to someone else. That's going to happen unless you make a very specific uh, move to retain that business. And you have to get out there with the clients and explain why they should keep their business with you, maybe even increase their business with you because of the new service levels that you can provide. What has been BP's most successful merger to date? The most successful deal for BP, if I had to pick one, was the BP Amico merger because it delivered in a number of dimensions. The first one, it delivered the big synergy prize, $2 billion over two years. Uh, very tangible, really added to the value of, the, of both companies, effectively what became BP. The second sort of big reason was it really delivered strategically. We became a member of the top tier of oil companies worldwide. It gave us market positions globally that were first tier market positions. And that was significant because we're going after very large opportunities in countries around the world trying to find large oil fields. To do that, you be able, have to be able to bear the risk. When, you, when you're that size, you can bear the risk better. And you have to be able to get through the door to do the negotiation. And governments take the top tier companies in the oil companies very seriously. They take the next tier a little less seriously. And we thought access was vitally important to us going forward. And this was a, a real key for us to get access.